is going on, everybody? Happy Monday to you all. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy as we embark on these strange times. Uh, great episode today for you. I am joined uh, by my friend Kathy Kelly, who, who has joined us on uh, a Bachelor recap episode. Yes, that uh, was so much not fun. Not too long ago. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. <laughs> she also watched the finale with you. She yeah, did watch the finale. That was intense. It was intense. Like, didn't really, I mean, I knew how I felt in the moment, but just how everyone else was processing what we were seeing. It was truly never seen before. The TV. the biggest victim in any season or a uh, villain in any season of The Bachelor being a mother of a contestant. Wild. Um, we are expecting to have Barb on this podcast. We haven't recorded that yet. We were recording this before we have Barb, but I am looking forward to to sitting down with. I'm Barb looking and, forward to listening to that. That'll and, be interesting. And learning her her point of view. It should be should be fascinating. Yeah. But um, I wanted to have uh, Kathy come on just because. Um, She's smart and interesting and, and uh, has her own dating stories of which she can give perspective to. Uh, Kathy, if for those of you who don't know, has been killing it in the entertainment industry for some time. I know we yeah. mentioned that she was uh, part of the OG Bachelor podcast, yeah. uh, Bachelor recaps with the After Buzz. Or podcasts are cool. <laughs> the past, past couple of years, you've been working uh, with the WWE. Yeah, I was at WWE for four years and uh, recently moved back to Los Angeles from Stanford, Connecticut and Brooklyn, New York, where I was living. You were living uh, in Brooklyn? Yeah, I was living in Brooklyn. I was living I was in, in, Brooklyn. in Greenpoint and then in Williamsburg the last couple of years I was out there. And I loved it, but uh, well, all of my, my friends and family are out here. And, are they? Yeah. Um, so you enjoyed your time, though? Yeah, I work wise or uh, oh. life wise. It was. I mean, I love the better. transition. Honestly, moving because I I got this opportunity, had to move, pack up all of my stuff within seventy two hours to move across the country. Thought I would be back in a couple months because um, I thought that I would be traveling with them and was going to be allowed to move back, but. Um, it didn't pan out that way. So I, I didn't say bye to a lot of people. I, cool. I expected to see them, you know, a few months down the line and, um, making friends living in Stanford was definitely hard to meet friends and make, make friends with people. Um, but then moving to Brooklyn, I had more of an opportunity to, to meet people my age. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that area. We're, so, and then, you know, we talk about dating and stuff, mm -hmm. relationship status now, single in a relationship? Very married? single. Very single. Yeah. Uh, how was dating in Brooklyn? Um, so I was in a relationship at the time okay. when um, I moved out there. That was part of the reason uh, we chose to live together. So I moved out of Stanford. And then um, after we split, I still stayed in Brooklyn for another year. Okay. Yeah. And here we are. What's next for you out in L.A.? Next for me. Um, I'm trying to figure that out. I have a lot of uh, opportunities that I've been presented with, and it's just figuring out what I actually want, what avenue I want to pursue. I think I want to do a little bit of everything of, um, you know, getting into acting, uh, still continu continuing to pursue hosting. Uh, I think with the the industry shutting down for a little bit or or uh getting pushed back on a lot of jobs uh giving me an opportunity to really create some of my own projects sure. and maybe delve into screenwriting a little bit that's fun yeah very cool yeah are you still doing any are you do you are you totally done with wwe do you think you'll ever do any work with them whatsoever i'm sure there'll be a time when we work together in the future uh I really enjoyed the people that I worked closely with. I worked a lot with um, their digital platform. So mm -hmm. uh, them creating, you know, YouTube series and, um, and, and podcasts and, and doing stuff for the WWE network. Um, that was always really enjoyable just because I got to have more creativity and ownership with it. Mm -hmm. And then um I have, I still have a really good relationship with, um, Stephen McMahon and triple H. They, they were mentors to me throughout that entire process cool. there. And, um, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get to work on something. I remember together again. Well, I, yeah. I did an after buzz episode with, with you. It was like, I, th I think it might've been your last one. And you were, you said, Oh, I just took this job. And was you, it my last one? It might've been. Cause I remember you're like, Oh yeah, I'm like moving. And I'm like, Oh, bye. And 
I didn't realize that you were such a big, you were like a huge fan. I, I loved it. Like yeah. that was, that was my dream gig um, for years of when I started at After Buzz, I became really close with uh, Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos. And um, in addition to hosting a couple of their podcasts, The Bachelor being the first one that I uh, was a part of, I ended up doing talent booking for the entire network. And so I was in the office at the time that our executive producer was watching Monday Night Raw on Tuesday mornings. And the first week I I was like, oh, I don't want to watch this. By week two, I was hooked and I was I was watching it on my own, going to local indie shows, watching, you know, wrestlers get their start and it was a lot of fun. How many? Watch Glow at all? I love Glow. Yeah, you could have been on it. Oh, they had. They've actually had um, several of the cast members have come to events, so it's really oh, cool. cool for them to yeah. get to interact with that world as well. Yeah, they but, do a good job on that. Yeah, show. yeah, I loved it. Do you, you, I mean you must have a, a an interesting male audience or, or, or fan base that you because it's obviously a lot of male. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a male dominated world, I think, um, behind the scenes and as uh, audience. Yeah. But I think what's so interesting, too, is WWE has a global audience. So you you start to like. I could go out on the street and no one would know who I am here. And then you go to like Canada and because they would do these little uh, snippets during Monday Night Raw, people would know who you are. Yeah. Or uh, there was much more of a following, a, lo a very loyal following in England and Europe. So really? it's it's just a, a And I'm assuming like certain world. parts of the country here too. Yeah. Yeah. There are definitely, there are cities where it's, it's, they're wrestling cities. Which, which Chicago is one of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of the pl same places, different audience. But yeah. Like a lot of the same cities that are bachelor cities would be wrestling cities. What are well. bachelor cities? Chicago's a good one. Really? Basically any city in the South. Midwest. Or mid okay. Midwest, South. Yeah, yeah. Uh, New York is actually a huge bachelor city. Yeah. Like when I go to New York, I feel, I feel the uncomfortable. buzz. Uncomfortable. <laughs> Not uncomfortable, but like there's also a lot of tourists there too, but there's tourists yeah. in LA. It's just different in New York, uh, but well, certainly LA, the Midwest. Well, LA, you can, you know, spill your coffee and spill it on a celebrity. Like you're just walking down the street and you yeah. can see someone. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't feel in LA as much, but like if I go to like home or Milwaukee or any, any, any smaller Midwest city yeah. uh, is, is definitely... Uh, it. Well, uh, should we get to some of these uh, callers and yeah. uh, share our, uh, do you feel like when you, uh, because you've been in relationships and you've had ones, you know, you're single now and it hasn't worked out. Do you, do you feel like you've got also gotten better at like, do you give your friends advice too? Cause that's with me. People always yeah. ask me like, well, how do you get good at this or whatever? I'm just like, because I've like I've been in a bunch of like <laughs> crap relationships and I've no. done crappy things and I've like learned. I, I have mixed emotions of it of like, I feel like I'm really good at, at giving advice to friends and I'm really well equipped to do that just because of all the the situations, dating situations that I put myself in. But then I question, I'm like, is my advice that good if it hasn't worked out for me? Yeah. I mean, I guess it just all depends on, of knowing, you know, it's like, well, I've, it's more like what I find, like what we do in the show, it's just more like what are like a lot of our, I mean, you'll, we'll find You'll find, hear this episode, the other yeah. episodes. It's like people will, they'll, they'll address the situation yeah. and they're kind of, there's always, I always find there's always something else that that's bugging them that they don't want to admit to themselves. Yeah. And it's kind of usually getting people to admit that to themselves first and then yeah. they get some more clarity. And that's, that's kind of where I've been of, um, there have been, I'm sure many situations that I didn't handle with the most maturity in my past, but getting to a place where I feel like I'm, uh, smarter in my decisions. And I don't know, I've, I don't think any of the, the relationships or, um, romantic dating scenarios that I've been in have ended poorly, even though they've ended. You've never had a bad break? No, no, no. Recently. Okay. Like the last, I would say three or four years. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. What kind of guy are you looking for? What kind of guy am I looking for? Um, I think in my life right now, I'm looking for someone that brings similar things to the table that I do. Okay. Of, um, still wanting to grow, but also, 
um, being at a place where they're really comfortable in themselves. Yeah, you seem I, super comfortable. Yeah, I realize now in my life, I, I've had so many insecurities that I've had to deal with. Yeah. And I'm, you know, still overcoming them. But I think I've gotten to a place where I actually feel whole. I don't you buy into the whole like thing yeah. of, of needing my other half. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in, in relationships in the past, I've definitely made a lot of sacrifices and realizing like I want someone who wants to compromise um you know I want someone who's comfortable with like a working woman who can also take care of the kids and like have this balance um not feed into the idea of of what someone else wants nice yeah What's an insecurity that you have? I feel like... Do you oh, I have most so people, many insecurities. Sure, but I, I feel like a lot of people look at you and, and, and would have guess no. it would be hard to believe. No, I was the shyest kid growing up. I told you, I had braces twice. I was I was not popular. I had no friends. Um, I had one friend when I was in elementary school. And then I think, you know, a couple towards the end of senior year of high school, um, I was just... I was this shy, awkward theater kid um, that my mom was working so much. I was her only kid. So I was, I was spending a lot of time alone by myself. Um, You're an only child? Yeah. Well, I'm my mom's only. My dad, he was okay. never really in the picture. He left um, before I was born, but he had uh, two sons that were 11 and 15 years older than me. Do you have any relationship with them? Um, Very little relationship, just more of like, hey, how are you? Um every few months but um yeah my dad and I don't have a relationship so yeah there was a lot of like um I'm such an advocate now for for going to see a therapist and for mental health because there were so many things that I struggled with not even realizing um kind of suppressing them in um thinking that I was okay with everything and realizing that I was really seeking out validation in in friendships in romantic relationships and even in work and sometimes that I was good enough because I had this person that was supposed to be a significant part of my life leave at such a young age yeah that's that's great I mean (laughs) no 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 it's great I I, no I, I like to ask these questions because I mean you know, people I'm sure look at you and people like to make assumptions of everyone. And um, it's always nice to have, you know, someone like you uh, share these stories because it's just relatable yeah. and it makes people feel like, oh, okay, yeah, I've been there or, or even like just mental health or yeah. if, if, if so-and-so can admit to it or own that and it makes it safer for everyone to kind of do it as well. So that's, thanks for sharing. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's get to these, uh, let's get to these calls and, uh, I think it will be a lot of fun. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castmedia.com, cast with a K. Always need uh, your calls and, uh, your 10 percenters out there. Uh, we, we love to hear from you. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it. Yeah. Open fit. Well, you know what, what a great time to find, uh, uh, great different workouts to do in the comfort of your home yes uh open fit uh is uh changing the way we work out Mm -hmm. they give you so many different varieties and different classes like extend bar yes yoga um sculpt your body with andrea rogers yeah uh great professional trainers uh and again you can do this right on your tv your uh, ipad your phone your laptop it's a must do. Must have. Yes. Well, I'm uh, I'm I'm constantly trying to stretch more, so uh, I uh, I do yoga with it. With Be- open fit. Yeah, because uh, I don't like doing yoga at yoga studios because You're I'm bad at it. <laughs> so it. Nice. It's perfect for that for me. Yeah, that's great. No better time to no get better. that open fi- open fit and uh, learn different and exciting ways to stay in shape and sculpt your body and have a ton of fun. From your living room. Yeah, that's right. Open Fit has changed the way we work out. And with my code V-I-A-L-L, you can join me on a fitness journey personalized just for you. Right now, my listeners get a 14-day free trial membership to Open Fit when you text V-I-A-L-L to 50, 50, 50. Try it for free or your money back. It's entirely risk-free. So what do you have to lose besides weight? You will get full access to Open Fit, all the workouts and nutrition guides, totally free for 14 days. Again, just text V-I-A-L-L to 50, 50, 50. Standard messages and data rates may apply. Great time to hydrate people with liquid IV. Rochelle, you were saying you just ordered a bunch. Yeah, I ordered a bunch of the hydration multiplier and they have a new product called the Energy Multiplier. So it... um 
gives you sustained energy boost with no crash. Like I do not take other kinds of energy drinks, but liquid IV, I feel really good about. Uh, it's important to hydrate. Yes. Um, this very much helps you hydrate. Uh, what else? It's not just for, you know, obviously a lot of people like to use it if they have a, a few glasses of alcohol right. to help them recover. Yeah. It's great for that, but also it's great throughout the day and we're never drinking enough water. Yeah. And like, I've been talking to my family, they're like, stay hydrated at this time. It's really important to stay hydrated. So I ordered the liquid IV just so I could multiply that and not be worried about getting dehydrated at this time. My, my favorite is also lemon lime. And it's also with the best part, it's just super easy. It just comes in these little packs. Yes. You put it in a glass of water, you put it in, you stir it up. Delicious. Drink. Yeah, it tastes good. I actually like, I drink it with my meals. <laughs> I do. It's like, okay. I don't, yeah. I, it's like a, kind of like to, instead of having like a like sugar, a, a sugary drink, right. it's like a little, it's a lemon lime treat that right. also hydrates my body. <laughs> Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Just go to liquidiv.com and enter promo code V-I-A-L-L to save 25% off and get better hydration and energy. That's liquidiv.com, promo code V-I-A-L-L. Don't wait. Start feeling your adventures today. What's your time with me? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Hey, Nick. It's Sarah. I'm 24. Hi, Sarah, 24. How can we help? All right. So this is a little complicated. Um, I moved to a new city recently, and I have a couple of friends that are from my hometown that introduced me to one of their friends from college. He's best friends with my ex-boyfriend, and we've ended up romantically involved for the past six seven months now so are you dating or are you just having sex so we're not dating um and we say that we can't date because that would be messed up and his it's more fun that know. way too yeah are you having you're having sex though so we didn't have sex until two months ago okay. which is <laughs> insane because i've never not had sex with someone for so long okay Okay, so uh, all right, but we are currently sleeping with each other. Yeah, oh, yeah. Totally. Okay, okay. All right, so and then <laughs> con <Duh>. continue. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, you never know, never assume. Yeah, no, um, so we started having sex, and even when we weren't having sex, we were sleeping with each other, like just, you know, side by side, hooking up, okay. everything but sex. When, uh, your, when your friends introduced you guys, uh, th were they aware that he was friends with your ex-boyfriend? So it's like another friend that's within that group as well. So absolutely. Okay. Are they still, are those two still friends? Yeah. Okay. Everyone's still friends, but the ex still doesn't know. And okay. how long ago was the ex-boyfriend? When did you guys break up? Uh, we broke up a long time ago, but we stayed in contact and we stayed sleeping together up until a year and a half ago. Okay. That's pretty no. I mean, it's, that happens. So what yeah, is, is your question is he doesn't know what should I do going forward or is there more to the story? Yeah. So I feel like I can't push it forward because I can't be like, hey, like you should tell your friend where it might risk your friendship sure. for me because like I don't necessarily want a boyfriend right now, but I'm also like, I like you so much. So what the fuck do I do? Mm. When you say but, you don't necessarily want a boyfriend right now, what do you mean? Like I... I've been busy all the time. Okay. I want to have my young adult life, but at the same time, I'm still not seeing anyone else. So it's like, I mean, I'm basically dating. So just to be clear, you really aren't looking for a boyfriend, but you kind of like them. And this has nothing to do with being afraid of telling yourself you don't want to have a boyfriend because you're afraid of this messy situation blowing up in your face. Okay. So if he was like, I want you to be my girlfriend, I'd totally be like, yes, I can't deny that. <laughs> okay, that's so fine to make sure. So uh, even trying to play cool girl on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just chill. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll take ha it easy. Have you broached the subject? Yeah, we'll do... Yeah. Sorry, what was it? Have you broached the subject with him about either A, actually dating, or what does he say about this situation? Because quite honestly, so, it seems like it's more on him than we, you. It is. That's the issue. It's more on him. And I don't like not having the control. Um, but my thing is, we've tried to end it, I think, 
twice before where we were like, oh, this is kind of messed up. Like, we shouldn't do this. Like, that was, like, right away after we first started hooking up because I felt bad, he felt bad. And then we were like, oh, two weeks later, like, hey, how are you? So then we tried to end it again. And then things all of a sudden got, like, really serious. And we are like, no, like, we really care about each other. So what do we do now? Okay. Well, you're past the point of no return. Is it re- is it re- with regards to like, if you guys were going to like not do this out of consideration for your ex and his friend, that's that's we're well past that. Like, there's no going yeah. back, and that's fine. Whatever. Um, but at wh- what point am I like, hey, we should tell him, or do well, I just wait for us to end it abruptly? I'm of the opinion. I don't know. What, Kathy thinks, but like he's your ex boyfriend, and I understand that we don't want to go out of our way to hurt our exes, and we don't want to be cruel. But like he's your ex, and by definition, he's not a part of your life. Now, this guy, however, yeah. is still friends with him, and yeah. uh, I appreciate he wants to protect that friendship. What he's doing now is wrong, and I, I guess what I'm saying, yeah. not wrong, but it's like, listen, he's doing the thing right. You can't change that. That's what I mean by you're, you're past the point of no return. So if he wants to salvage his friendship, um, he needs to be upfront, kind of like a, a man and just kind of deal with it. You know, if his feelings for you are sincere and real, um, then, then, then you should, we should fit, you should figure it out with him. Also like, yeah, kind of like, why don't you guys just stop pretending to like just have sex and do this thing you're doing, but like we can't date because of the situation. The situation is, it's it, it is what it is. Like, trust me, when this guy finds out if he does care, because who knows, maybe he'll be like, you know what? I'm happy for you guys. I don't know. But if he does care, if he does care, when you guys are like, well, I mean, listen, we're not actually dating. We're just fucking like, that's not going to be like, oh, oh, okay. Then it's fine. Like, that's not going to happen. So like, you know, but I feel like he can't publicly care because he now has his like girlfriend that, of a little over a year. People are still going to have feelings regardless, whether it's a feeling toward you still romantic feelings towards you or embarrassment of yeah. other people in his life knowing and not sharing it, maybe mistrust because yeah. these people who he cares about uh, were keeping the secret. Totally, because like now you're. Oh crit- yeah, no. Now they. That's the worst part. The real issue isn't right. the fact that you guys are hooking up or dating. It's like now that it's been going on for so long. His first question, to this guy is going to be like, "Well, how long has this been going on for? How long you, have you been doing this where you didn't tell me?" And that will be the biggest problem it won't be like the fact that you're doing but i feel like we don't need to like disclose how long if it does come out he's probably gonna ask it's gonna (laughs) there are gonna be a lot of questions how many people know how many people know um so i mean all of my friends uh that are from college so he doesn't really have a relationship with any of them but a good amount of his good friends Mm. know yeah so my advice to you would be going to this new guy and saying, we need to do the right thing, you know, and he needs to kind of step up and, and be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, because like, it's kind of a red flag on, on his part to be. Yeah. It's, you really have to think about it's, it's very easy to gravitate towards people in similar friend groups, just because obviously you all enjoy each other's company. So you're going to have similarities there, but really taking a look at if this relationship is something that could be real, if there aren't those, that chemistry there of that forbidden romance that like you guys are able to hide it because sometimes that makes things more exciting. Yeah, totally. There's an element there. So at first I was kind of like, oh, am I doing this? Because like I'm kind of being spiteful or anything. And we we addressed that too. And he was like, you probably only want me because you can't have me. Mm. And I was like, oh, that might be it. Um, But I mean, it's been months now. And I'm too deep just for that to be the case. Yeah. So you really like him. And you would like like him to be your boyfriend. Yes. he wanted to be that's a yes <laughs> that's that's neither here nor there ideal scenario totally a yes. okay like doesn't change things just because you're like 
you know, your ego is like, oh, well, only if he wants to. Like, you want to date him. Exactly. And you'll be super bummed yeah. if he called you up today and said, I'm, you know, I don't want to see you anymore. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'd be heartbroken, but it's fine. <laughs> sure. You will be fine, but it's okay to admit that you'll be heartbroken. Um, yeah, 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 I think, uh, I think you should say this guy, listen, we need to, we need to, I think it's also okay for you to say, like, I really like you mm -hmm. and I don't want to stop. Like we've had this fun, but like, I want this to be a real thing or I want it to end. Um, because I've said this before, yeah. I, I, on other shows, like you can't, you can't pretend something that you can't keep pretending something that's not and it used to be this one thing, but now like you even said, it's changed. You have real feelings. So whether you tell yourself you're just doing it for the sex or not, doesn't change the fact that in reality you like him and it will only get messier. If you keep pretending it's something that it's not, uh, you'll keep lying yeah, to yourself totally and say, not. you don't care. But meanwhile, you're like, well, if we're not dating, does that mean you can hook up with other people? And the fact that he's willing to lie to his friend, is he willing to lie to me too? You're just going to like, you're going to be, you know, create a rabbit hole. Um, and so you needed, a, a, you know, maturely to another adult who's probably around your age, you know, your two 24 year olds, two, what's how old is he? Yeah, I'm 24. Yeah. So you're two adults who should be adults about an adult situation. Um, and it's like, it's I fine. I feel like that totally is like, Hey, like you should tell him, and then it's like, hey, like I'm not ready for that, so we should step well, away. You can, you can separate the conversations as well. Of I know that it puts you in a vulnerable place, but asking him, hey, before we continue on, can we have this conversation just so that we're on the same page? Yeah. Also, if he yeah, said yeah. I'm not ready to tell him, I would. That's a red flag. Why? Like, when are you going to be ready? Yeah. And why are you so willing? Like, I get it. Like, we we both did this. Like, I'm not. Don't like, don't put the blame on him and, and don't like burden him. But like, we did this and we yeah. need to deal with this. And like, like adults, we need to address this. And it, I don't want to, I don't want either of us to be dishonest with him. I'm not, he's not my boyfriend, but as a human being, I just don't want to be dishonest. And this like sneaking around has been kind of fun, but I'm tired of doing that. And his response to yeah. that will be telling uh, about his ability to be honest and mature. That's true. That's true. No, yeah. I get that. Yeah. And I kind of figured it would be this, but I think my issue is I'm just not ready to let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, admit to yourself that you like him. Stop pretending you don't stop pretending that you're too busy to have a boyfriend. And maybe you are like, if, if this guy wasn't in the picture, you wouldn't necessarily need a boyfriend. You'd focus on your career, but like, it's not about yeah. it, like, you 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 date someone when you meet someone that you like enough to date. That's it, you know. Oh, have you made a lot of friends in this new town that you're in? Uh yeah, no, definitely. And I've tried to date. Um, within the six months, I was kind of still trying to see other people. That way, I was like, oh, like I'll just lean myself off, like sure. no big deal. Um, and I last saw somebody, I think, like four months ago. But I'm just like, I'm not really interested in anyone else. Like, what's the you like, yeah, you like. Yeah. Well, I mean, moving to a new place, not knowing that many people is really tough. I think that, you know, yeah. maybe there is some vulnerability there of this is comfort from home, comfort of someone that you, you yeah. knew in the past. Yeah, well, I didn't know him, but I knew like his friends. The group, so that yeah. Might be as well. No, I, I totally get what Kathy's saying, and she's definitely right. But it doesn't change the fact that right now you like the guy. I guess what I'm saying is yeah. you just need to address that situation. And if, to Kathy's point, if, if he doesn't respond the way he should, you should pay attention to that and you shouldn't ignore it. And if it doesn't work yeah. out, if eventually it gets too messy and you realize like, you know what, this was a very telling uh, reaction, uh, then, you know, be optimistic about the fact that you like haven't really given uh, yourself a chance to like meet all the new people you would certainly meet by moving to a big city and kind of breaking yeah. away from this initial, you know, just not necessarily breaking off this group, but expanding it. Different yeah. Not groups. feeling like you would be lonely because there's, there's so much opportunity to, yeah. to meet people and expand your social life. Rochelle in times like these, let's talk about bras. Let's talk about comfortable bras. Comfortable bras. That you can order from the comfort of your home. Well, and when you're just lying on the couch, I'm assuming you want the most comfortable bra 
you can find. Oh yeah. The thing I love about third love is you take a quiz online. It's called the fit finder quiz. It's actually fun to do and it helps you figure out what kind of bra is going to fit your boobs the perfect way. Because listen, we're all shaped differently. No one knows that better than us. Right, Nick, you know. I know. <laughs> I know. And they have a perfect fit promise. So you have 60 days to wear it. If you don't like it, you can return it and they donate it to women in need. So it's a win-win. I took the Fit Finder quiz and I found out I'm ha- I'm between sizes. So this is one of the only companies that comes in half sizes. Ooh. So I was ordered to I was able to order that and it fits so much better than my other bras. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they are offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash V-I-A-L-L now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off today. Like is, when you when, when you get older, you you like you don't just have one group of friends. You kind of have multiple group of, groups of friends. At least I, I did, yeah. right? Like different people and you might meet someone who introduces you to their group of friends and you enjoy them and they don't really even mesh with your other group of friends. I've had that happen where it's just like, you know what? Yeah. Maybe you guys will interact, but I don't really need that to happen. This is also worst case scenario is we're getting ahead of ourselves <laughs> and thinking like, if this doesn't work out between you two, because you guys could have a conversation where you are honest with him and saying that you want to see where things go either exclusively or take that next step in in whatever you guys are doing and and he responds in the same way yeah yeah because we'll, we'll prepare for both also like listen if you two both really like each other it's not going to necessarily help the other you know your ex understand it but if you are sincere and saying listen we dislike each other i'm sorry you know like at least you're sincere about that, which is better than like, I don't know, we were bored and we decided to have sex. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like... I feel like that's not as bad though. No, no you can have sex. Because yeah. that response would be like, to, if, if, if my buddy did that, right? I'd be like, you could have had sex with anyone. Why'd you there have to have sex with my ex? billion people in the world. <laughs> like if it's just about sex, just have sex. Cruel. But if someone's like, listen, it didn't work out with you, but I love her. And it's just like, well, I guess. Did you break up with the uh, your ex? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's gonna make it harder. It was, yeah. So that's why I felt bad because I was like, "Wow, I've already hurt you, and like now I am here again." <laughs> but he has a girlfriend, right? Yeah, I heard she's great. Sure. I don't know her. Got to do the right thing, all right? Sometimes the right thing's hard, and it's definitely uh, more on him because he's still the friend. But I think if I were you, it would bother me that he is not willing to do the right thing. Um, it's never going to get easier. So. There's never going to be a right time. Um, it, the longer he waits, it will only make it worse and harder for his friend to accept. So I think he needs to be honest and show humility and ask for forgiveness. And he might not get it, but I think you guys should also have an honest conversation with each other. Um, and maybe you can prompt it by saying, cause if it is just a fuck buddy situation, then Maybe just actually end it and you don't have to tell the guy. I don't know. But if you do care about each other and it sounds like you do, then first address that and be honest with each other and saying, I like you and I want to date you. So we need to like deal with this because what I don't want to keep doing is pretending we only want to have sex. And I don't think we do that. We do talk about our feelings, okay. but it's like, okay, we have these feelings, but it has to stop like before we can be like, no, it, do, it doesn't have to stop. You just have to have a hot, tough conversation. You know, it's messy. It's life. It'll be fine. You know, this can happen. It's not ideal, but, you know, stuff okay. happens. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Keep us posted. <laughs> I will. All right. Thank you, guys. Best of luck. luck. Have you ever um, been into an ex's friend? Um, no, but I did go through a situation where I was dating someone and his ex started dating his roommate. You were dating someone and his ex started dating. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it was crazy. just, it was a very messy situation that I How that brought make you up. How did feel? Um, I felt comfortable at first. Uh, I was friends with that entire group uh, or the everyone who's living sure. together um, at the time. And it did bring up a lot of past feelings for the guy that I was dating at the That's time. What I'm so like in this yeah. scenario, you're like the the other girl when she was like, "Oh, I heard she's cool." You're that girl in this yeah. scenario. Yeah, we we ended up 
parting ways, obviously. Um, and this is almost a decade ago at this point. But it it was really tricky, I think, for, for all parties involved. And because there was so much secrecy, I think it made things that much worse. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Messy. But I've also been in situations where you think that it's it's more fun because sure. you're just you're keeping it secret from people because yeah. But yeah. what's weird though is the only thing they're actually doing wrong is hiding it because it's not a crime to fall for like that can happen. Mm -hmm. And if you are sincere, then you just have to do the right thing. Yeah. Even if that means making someone upset. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Uh, so my name is Jamie. I am 24 and I'm from Orlando, Florida. All right. Um, so long story short, I have been dating um, someone who is 30 years old. Um, uh, we started dating, I don't know, I think it was like 10 months ago. And everything was great and fine and dandy. And then come to now, um, I'm starting to realize that there's a lot of baggage that comes with this human being. Um, he's a great person. Don't get me wrong. But um, he pretends like there is no baggage. And then when he's either drinking or this kind of feels like it, um, just kind of dumps all of it out all at one time. It's basically like drops a giant bomb, you know, on me. Um, and, and it's all his personal issues. It's not about me. It's, it's things like, you know, just like randomly. Like, for example, we were at a brewery and my card got declined and he was like, uh, that guy that's so embarrassing like I can't believe that happened like um it, like I don't be like your deadbeat dad like things like that like just nasty comments and I I was asking for help mind you he lived with me for four months and paid no rent no groceries nothing and he's talking about his card getting the, my card getting declined and mind you I have money that's not the issue it was just the wrong card like just like things like that. And, and so it causes issues. I have no idea what to do. Like I said, everything was great and fine and dandy. And then here we are and these little things start coming up. So I'd say currently it's like 90% good, 10% bad, but I'm really concerned that what's 10 the, good. what's the 90% good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I giving a little backstory. I was in um, a relationship prior to him. I moved across the country for a different guy. Hmm. Um, so I, you know, moved. I was in love with this person. Come to find out this person was in multiple relationships. I was not the only one. Okay. So I was, I've, I've been in a relationship where I know like, you know, this person is not all in for me at all. He's clearly, you know, he's just not the right person. And I could feel that. So this one, I mean, the way he looks at me is the way I've always wanted somebody to look at me. I mean, genuinely, like this person loves me. He would never hurt me, but it's just like these random times where it's like, well, that was hurtful. Like, so it's, it's very contradicting of, of, you know, he, he looks at me, he tells me he loves me. He's in awe of me. And then, you know, just randomly, I'd say every like once a month, we he comes out with like these these Hiroshima bombs and just drops them on me and I don't know what to do with my hands like I have no idea what to do. Oh. <laughs> well, um, my initial first takeaway is just because someone's uh, better than your last boyfriend doesn't mean they're great. Um, yeah. You know, and if uh, if your last love that you've moved across the country for and took all these big risks for only to find out that they were in multiple relationships must be a very hurtful, even embarrassing uh, experience that you never thought you would go through. And you definitely have some baggage of your own from that. And that's totally okay and understandable. And it's normal to then meet someone who, as you described, looks at you a certain way and makes you feel safe and almost in a weird way, his kind of toxic behavior, uh, while terrible, uh, makes you feel in this kind of fucked up way that he really loves you because he's so crazy and, and so insane with like how he acts sometimes. But if nothing else, that makes you feel like he's not going anywhere, uh, which kind of, you know, makes sense why you would desire that type of, uh, feeling because there was a lot of distrust and a lot of things going on in the past relationship. So don't confuse 
a little bit better with a lot of better. Because my guess is it's not 90% great. Um, you know, my guess is it's like 20% great, 80% bad, but that great's better than what you had before. And you're, you know, deep down that you don't deserve to be treated this way, whether it's once a month or every day. Yeah, I agree. And, and the, I think the complicated issue, which adds to the situation, and I know that I should have never done it, but I also work with him. Yeah, I mean, that so adds Oh, I mean, literally when I say work with him, I mean, like, we sit in front of each other. Like, it's bad. It's been 10 months, you said? At yeah. what point did he move in with you? And how um, did that come about? Early, early on, he had sold a house. So it was like, okay, well, it, it was more of a situation. It wasn't like, yes, let's move in. This is the right timing. It was primarily situational. Did it make you so, feel good that he needed you in that moment? Um, yes. Yeah. And no, while I do like the feeling, obviously, of, you know, I'm helping somebody. This is this is somebody special to me. I want to help them. I want to help through this, you know, time. It's now, you know, it's my house. Like, this is my place. And I, now I'm finally getting some rent. But, you know, I, I now I'm, like, kind of looking back and thinking, like, okay, maybe I was just at a point in my life where I had this picture of what a good relationship looks like and just threw him in front of it instead mm -hmm. of putting him in the, in the forefront and saying, okay, paint the picture and let me see if this fits with what I do. So now I'm starting to think I, I don't think this person is right for me. And the issue is how do I, how do I separate this, move on with my life while working with this human being? And now he also lives with me. So this is, it's, it's real, a real situation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely messier with the combination of living and working with him, but it's it's not like an impossible situation. Yeah. It's sure that sucks and it's awkward, but uh, he can move out at any moment. It's your house. So step one, be like, hey, if you want to break up with him, you break up with him and he has to leave. And if he's weird about that, you know, we can always call the cops. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Super inconvenient, awkward, tough conversation. Certainly a, a tough maybe a week or two while he figures his shit out. But like, whatever, you know, that. And then as far as work goes, once again, does HR are aware of your dating? Or, or like, is it a... Uh, no. Huh? No. Oh, God, no. Okay. Well. That uh, might be something to talk about. Yeah. Um. So you've also mentioned that it's 90% good, 10% bad, but then... uh a couple minutes later and more into us questioning, you said that you're trying to get out of this situation or assess where it's at because you realize that it might not be the healthiest. So where, where is your gut right now? Do you feel like this is something that you should continue to pursue or it's something that you should take a step back from? I mean, ultimately I, I think I, I think I know what I need to do. I think I've just been, kind of seeking a little bit of reassurance that like, you know, the fear has always been like, I don't want to throw something away that actually is good. Like maybe I'm, I'm just being harsh. I don't think that I am. No, I not. think that yeah. I, and I know, I, I think that's just hearing it. I think is just nice to know, like I'm not throwing something away that, that I should be kind of pursuing or giving him a chance to pursue. Like there, there's a difference between, you know, still needing to grow up and, and, you know, move past things. But if you're not moving past them, like you're a grown ass man, you shouldn't need me <laughs> to tell you, hey, get your life together because I'm not, and I, and I laid it out. I said, if X, then Y, if you do not take care of these things and fix what needs to be fixed, I'm out. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, I, I have had that conversation. I basically told him like, this happens again. And I will remove your things and you will be done. And this is over. Like there's no questions asked about it. So I've had this conversation and it's unfortunate because now I feel like I'm just sitting in this waiting period and I almost do just want to pull the plug. It but sounds like yeah, you, he's showing his true colors now yeah. of you said the first couple months were good and fine and dandy, but sure. that's, that's the honeymoon phase of when we're all putting our best foot forward and not sharing any of that emotional baggage that we have because we want that person to like us. And in a lot of cases, we, we are seeking out these relationships for validation in your case of that you would have a relationship of someone that really needed and wanted you. Yeah. 
Also, I mean, I think the bigger issue here, here in terms of the things that you share that are issues is that the way he talks to you, the way he speaks to you when he's frustrated or mad or whatever, you like the him the fact that he's lazy and kind of immature, um, that's not great either. And you have certainly have a right to that to bother you. But if if the worst thing about him was he's kind of lazy and whatever, but like respectful of you, uh, looked at you a certain way, uh, did all these things, but he's just kind of like, listen, you could be in a relationship like that and I wouldn't be, you know, that's fine. But you just like, I think, you know, you're trusting your gut too. It's like how he talks to you. And that's the first thing you said. And that's, I think that's probably, I mean, to me, when I hear that's the reason why you should end a relationship for sure. You know, whether you're willing to put up with someone's kind of not being as motivated as you are, that's a personal decision, but it's never should be okay for you to have someone like overreact and belittle you and kind of project their own shit onto you. Uh, because I mean, my guess is like, if you, you, you're the one who has their shit together, he doesn't. And that whole like card being rejected thing was an opera opportunity for him to like lower you down a peg because he feels insecure about himself. That's immature and that's not okay. Yeah. And that's probably behavior is not going to change because he's not aware that he's you know, going to do that. Um, it's one thing for you to kind of be lazy and be like, listen, this is who I am and I love you, you know, like, yeah. and you can be like, eh, he's kind of a, he's kind of an idiot and he's kind of lazy, but he's my lazy idiot and he makes me feel really <laughs> good and he's super sweet and he does other things that make me feel happy. You know what? No judgment, yeah. but he's kind of a dick. Um, but if, if you have your shit together too, don't, let this affect your work life because I know how hard that is to not mesh those things and have them separate. Uh, if you're saying that you guys work in very close quarters, I've, I've had to work with an ex in the past, someone that I lived with and it was uncomfortable for us. But I think the, the best way to go about it is to not let anyone else know in your in your working environment that something's changed if you guys do go your separate ways i would still treat him with respect at work um and and not really go and gossip to other people yeah right. i mean that's always this debate on whether you should tell hr or not or whether hr is your friend and that's mm -hmm. for you to decide what relationship you have but i think kathy makes a great point too is like you, you don't want you, it to affect your work environment you want to make sure that like do the right things at work be very professional be nice to him uh, don't gossip, you know, all those are great, great points that, that, that Kathy made. And if he's going to not act that way, let him burn the bridge, let other people see that behavior. Um, but you don't want it to affect your money. You don't want it to affect, yeah. um, you know, your job performance because clearly you are the one that's taking care of yourself and, and him at some points too. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, I think was the, the thing that I worried the most about is I don't trust how he's going to react. I can't, you know, obviously I can only control myself and that's what I plan to do. I just would hate for somebody to ruin an opportunity for myself. Like I'm, I'm doing really well and I moved here and I got a job at a really good organization. So I just don't want him putting my job at jeopardy because he's, you know, got his panties in a wad, you know, and, yeah. and I just, I, it's, I mean, again, something for you to take a look into but like you might want to consider if you do have a big concern about how he will react is letting hr know like yeah. hey like so we hung out uh it's it's over we're no longer hanging out and i just want to make you aware of it because um because what would be, if he if if he starts acting a certain way and everyone's like what's going on here it's gonna eventually gonna like he might say something you know, and just blast it out. And then you don't want to look like you're hiding it. So mm -hmm. you might want to get ahead of it. Yeah. And I don't think that that's an opportunity to say anything bad about him. You just say, I wanted to make you aware that this relationship happened. And we know that, uh, you know, that's always tricky if it is two coworkers dating each other, but now it's ending. Um, and I just wanted to. Yeah. And you probably don't have to give him the details exactly. of how long you dated or dated. You just say, we hung out romantically outside of work. Uh, I'm choosing to end it. And I just want you guys to be aware because I just want to, I want my, no one else at work knows. I want to be very professional, but I think it's time for you guys. I want to disclose this information because um, I, I'm making this decision to end it. I don't know if he'll be happy about it, but 
I just I want to I want you guys to know that that might be smart knowing that you just don't know uh, how he's going to react. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but it sounds like that's that sounds like we're breaking up here, and you can st- stop stop yeah. telling yourself that you know I'm ninety percent happy. I always used to do that of like the relationship is ninety five percent good. There's just that five yes. percent that doesn't match up, and you keep on you you have those attachments to what it was like at the beginning or promises that were made or or this idea of what you thought that they would be and when it doesn't pan out that way you don't necessarily want to give it up because it it is better than past relationships cool. or it's it's almost what you want and you believe in this potential and yeah i i totally agree and, and you know all the fear about like oh i'm worried about ruining a good thing my guess is especially considering how your past relationship went you'll probably feel very good about yourself and very empowered. Once you get through the mess of it all and you're like the logistics that you know you're you're worried about and like, oh, how's it, oh, the moving and the job and et cetera, et cetera. But I think you'll feel good saying, you know what? I know I deserved better. Uh, I wasn't happy. And instead of like staying in a kind of a toxic situation, I chose to give myself a chance to find something better because I know I deserve it. And I think that will you'll feel good about yourself. I agree. I think the decision is right up. <laughs> well, we, we're glad we could help you get to that point. But uh, yeah, just be smart. Um, you know, be thorough, get ahead of it. Um, and, uh, and this, you know, be kind to him, but don't rip the bandaid off, you know. I'm also really proud of you that you learned this lesson so early on in your life and not some yeah. time when it was more significant, like, you know, 35 and a big job on the line. This is this is something that I think everyone in some capacity goes through and and you survived it. Yeah, especially given your past situation, it would be very common for someone in your situation to just keep it saying, well, this is better than what I had. And he's he won't leave me, you know. Yeah, um, doesn't make sense. Don't it's, settle. <laughs> sounds like you have a good head on your shoulders and you have a lot going for you. So, uh, you know, don't let these guys drag you down. Yes. Well, thank you, guys. All right. Well, best of luck. Yes. Thank you. All right. Take Bye. care. Uh, what a delightful young lady. She's good head on her shoulders. Yeah. Uh, the HR stuff's always like, I always get like a little like, I don't like. I don't know what you should do with that because it's a tough people have situation. people have t- people have strong opinions on both sides of like telling HR or saying HR is not your friend. Yeah, I think it, it's it's definitely situational. But um, I mean, have you ever dated someone that you've I worked with? No. no, it's it's so tough, especially in the entertainment industry, because you end up working with everyone eventually. But yeah, um, but that's it, so in a small town too, or in like, a small yeah. place. Um, but like I yeah, but this one because he's so unpredictable and she doesn't know how he's going to react. I think she should get ahead of it. Yeah. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name is Hunter, and uh, I'm 21 years old. Hunter, 21, 10 percenter. Thanks for calling, buddy. Looks like you Thank live you. in a forest Thanks too. For What's that? It looks like you live in a forest. There's so many trees. Pine trees behind, behind yeah. you. Yeah, so we're in a very uh, uh, country area. There's a lot of maple trees. We have about six maple trees around our Oh, house. I love it. Yeah. Pretty. yeah. Looks, looks nice. Super nice. Actually, uh, from Wisconsin. Are you? Where you are. Is that where yeah. you're calling from? Wisconsin. Yeah. What part? Um, Near La Crosse. Okay, yeah. Good area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. How can we help you, Hunter? Yeah, so um, I just kind of have a question about, I recently broke up with my girlfriend about two months ago. It was a mutual breakup. Um, you know, very, both of us were just, you know, uh, agreed we're on the same terms, which was good. And, um, so, you know, not a bad breakup by any means. Um, we were together about 14 months, uh, loved each other, enjoyed being together, attracted to each other physically, emotionally. Um, however, we didn't have a ton of the same interests. Hmm. Um, and that started to become a little bit of an issue as, as the, the relationship went on. However, the biggest re- reason we kind of broke up was because of kind of a gut feeling we both had that we weren't the one for each other. Like we'd feel super in love one day and then the next kind of had this weird gut feeling of, you know, maybe we aren't, you know, maybe we aren't supposed to be the ones to get married. Um, and just kind of, maybe we overthought it, maybe we didn't, but just, just kind of this gut feeling that we both had and both had it, you know, expressed to each other. So my question kind of is, you know, is it, is it normal? Is it a valid reason to break up because of this, not having the feeling of being in love or, or not 
like 100% in love, not having the feeling of being 100% in love 100% of the time, um, you know, having this gut feeling that maybe we aren't um, the one for each other. Yeah, I think so. that's totally valid, especially at 21. How old is she? Yeah, she's 22, a year old. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think it's totally valid. I mean, I think at 21, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. So sometimes when you're 21, it's what's more common, at least it was for me and a lot of my friends, and I don't know how it was for Kathy, yeah. that you like, you're just like so in love and everything's just super intense and you're just like fantasizing about the future and and you kind of realize i'm like okay maybe we just got a little excited at once we start to annoy annoy each other um and it sounds like in this relationship you guys uh, you know it's it, quite honestly it sounds like more of a, like a o- older more mature relationship where it's like yeah we like we hang out and i was it's gonna nice. say you guys are so mature yeah. that you guys ended mutually <laughs> yeah. at, at that yeah. young of an age you know and so yeah. go ahead no, i was just gonna say that yeah i think that um we just kind of, we talked about that as well, just feeling like um, we're both, I think we're both more mature people for our age kind of in a way. Um, so we kind of thought about that more, but also I think maybe a little bit to a fault that maybe we talked, we thought about it maybe a little too much. I don't know if you, you would think that, but I don't know if there's an age you're well, supposed to think about that. Yeah, I mean, no, ah. there's no right or wrong, but it sounds like you guys were trusting your guts, mm-hmm. which is a positive thing to do when you weren't, pert- like, again, like this is not the case for everyone, but at least it was for me when you're younger, it's like, you don't ask yourself these kind of questions. In fact, you know, when I first fell in love, it was like, I'm the most in love couple. And like, you, just, <laughs> you have these like insane kind of like, things that you measure romance by well that's, um, that's also how the the media or tv or movies portray it is, yeah. is you potentially meeting this young love and going your entire life um with obstacles but making it through with this one person and especially in the midwest i can't even describe i also grew up there of how many people get married in their early 20s yeah. and how that's that's a norm and i'm sure that there's there's some sort of pressure to have found your person this at this stage in your life yeah so yeah. uh there's no answer i mean and the way you guys seem to have handled it it seems like if you ever were to get back together you guys might have put yourselves in a position to do that right uh but it seems like you both and it doesn't, it doesn't need both of you to do this, even if it was just you to say, there's something inside me that wants to explore something. You're at the time of your life where you owe it yourself, owe it to yourself to, to do that. Um, I don't think you can be too pragmatic uh, at that young of an age, yeah. you know? Also, I am such a strong believer of if it's meant to be, it'll work itself out. So maybe you guys Are need... You? Yeah, I, 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 I do believe that of why aren't you? I think shit happens. Oh yeah, shit happens. But maybe, maybe she ends up getting married a year from now, and ten years from now she gets a divorce, and you guys find yourself yeah. both single, and like then you have fifty years together. Like there's, uh, I guess. I, but I've always kind of I, you'll realize if it's meant to be. I'll or go with things. Uh, what I always say is like I, I think things work themselves out, mm. right? Um, That's the same thing. No, it's yeah, I, it I, I, no, no, no. I could go, I could go on and on about this. I mean, I. I in this situation, I think we're kind of agreeing, but like you made the choice to break up and I don't think necessarily that like, what I'm saying is I don't think somehow they were preordained to meet only to have to no, break no, up. No, 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 I'm saying that yeah. if if six months from now you decide, wow, this person is incredible and I want to share my life with her, you can go back and say, hey, can we try this again? Yeah, I agree with Kathy there that you guys have set yourself up that if this person happens to be someone you do care about, that maybe it was just too early, you've given yourselves an opportunity to find each other again yeah. in life. Um, my guess is it won't happen. You know, My guess is you might be friends. Are you guys still friends? Are you... Yeah, well, we're kind of still friends, um, just talk off and on, you know, on and off. It's kind of been, you know, a better breakup than I feel like, you know, most talk about. Yeah. Um, I did, you know, we, we have talked about, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Um, See? She was moving away at the time. I know so, people say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and part of it too was we broke up um, actually two times before then in the 14 months. Um, I got back together pretty quickly after yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And so this time it was like, okay, it's the third time. Yeah. I think it's finally that we take 
some time yeah, apart. Yeah, I think you guys owe it to yourselves to like, it's very easy in this situation to break up, get bored and get back together. Um, it might take you a year to like meet someone worth your time yeah. to want to date. Uh, and at 21, there's nothing wrong with being single and dating casually and just meeting people uh, and focusing on other aspects of your life and same for her. And if she jumps into a relationship sooner than you, it's going to affect you, but yeah. certainly not a time to panic. Uh, and just because you guys haven't found someone in three or four, four months and like you miss each other, of course you miss each other. You like each other. You respect each other. You've had a lot of fun together. You dated for a reason. Like your ability to have fun together and have a nice time together and enjoy each other's company is not why you broke up. So that's why people often get back together in, the, in these situations because it's like, well, I mean, yeah. why not? You know? I mean, also, if you don't give yourself that space, it's okay to still text each other or call each other. But sometimes, at least from my experience yeah. in becoming friends with exes, if I don't have that physical space, uh, it's really easy to fall back into it. Yeah, and I think there's a you yeah. want there's a distinction you want to make is that you haven't become friends with her. What you are is friendly with her. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because to become friends with her would mean to uh, really have that period. And I think I I believe that only happens when you have some real space, mm -hmm. like. You don't talk for six to 12 months. You've dated other people. And Physical maybe, space and, and, maybe, and time. And maybe a year from now you reconnect and say, oh, so good to see you. And you like slowly build a friendship from there. Mm. This transition is what you guys are is you guys keeping each other close enough and being friendly while you're figuring it out because you're used to having each other ar around. And that's very different. So you're not actual friends. You're just being friendly with your ex. And there's definitely a difference yeah. there. Yeah. No, yeah, that makes sense. It did help, I think, that she actually moved across the country when? um to be with her family. So it was like it almost was basically a perfect So timing. she's out of the perfect. picture now in terms of like literally physically. Right, right, exactly. So it didn't allow us to have any, you know, she's like, I'm moving and you know, that's gonna happen and so you know, we don't have any chance to So where together. where are you now? You're just like so you just you're you you wanna make sure that it's uh you're not uh, saying no to a good thing kind of Right. Yeah, exactly. Because, um, you know, obviously she was um, a really great person and yeah. someone um, that we did talk about the future with a lot. And so I think it just kind of that gut feeling thing. I just thought, you know, a lot of people probably can relate to that maybe a yeah. little bit and just, um, you know, going, I don't know if you guys have had relationships where you're just, um, you know, you have this gut that, okay, maybe we aren't the best, even though we love each other and we're attracted to each other. And I mean, I was being. less mature than you are at your age. <laughs> I, I, I would, I still might be less mature. <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I would, you know, no matter how toxic it was, I would say I can make this work yeah. kind of thing. Uh, or going against your gut because yeah. you believe in the possibility of something. Well, it was almost kind of like for me, it was like, well, I told myself the first week that this was going to be the relationship. So no matter what <laughs> I thought after that, I have to make this work. Do you fall too fast? I did for sure. Yeah. Now I don't fall at all. But um, <laughs> now, yeah, I used to, I used to fall pretty fast. And then no matter what happened, it was because I was like, you know, you, I think when I was younger, at least you, you, you know, you get taught all these values from your parents about, um, you know, commitment and having character and sticking to your word and, and being so, and not being a quitter. And I think when we're young, we can confuse that with like just not being in a relationship that we really want to be in. Um, so for, so good for you. And like you said, I think, you know, I, if you guys, if you guys both date and, and, and you both, cause it doesn't matter if you realize that you love her and she's met someone else, then, then you're not compatible. But if in a couple of years, you're just like, I kind of just feel like, you know, I've met yeah. some people and no one was ever as good as you. And oh, by the way, I feel the same way. Then maybe you give another shot, but now you don't really know. My guess is it'll, it'll take some time. You're going to date and you should date, you know, like it shouldn't be that easy to meet someone new. And just because you go on a bunch of dates and you don't find someone doesn't justify that she was the person you should be with. It takes some time and you are young. Something that always helped me in that situation was thinking about myself in five years. What would I have the bigger regret doing or not doing of would I have, would you have a bigger regret having pursued this relationship and maybe not been your happiest, both of you, or would you regret not taking this time and, and figuring out if you guys do genuinely want to be back together and come back together organically? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I think if, 
you know, we talked about too, maybe we'll, you know, as we, cause since we're so young, you know, we'll change probably, obviously everybody does as time goes on. So it's possible in five years that, you know, some, some of our interests may line up more, you know, we've spent more time doing the things maybe that each other's interests um, maybe line up with a little bit, but what are the interests that are different? Um, just like our hobbies, what, you know, entertainment we like, there's a lot that didn't, um, didn't line up. The bachelor definitely lined up. So that was nice. <laughs> well, good. I feel like it always you. is for right. everyone. Plenty, yeah. plenty of, plenty of other women who <laughs> like the bachelor. <laughs> so that was nice. But other, yeah, there's just, you know, it was like I was into sports and she wasn't and she was really into a lot of different movies. And Sounds I, like I most men and women relationships. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't think that really, like, honestly, like that doesn't really matter. I don't think you have to like yeah. all the same things. It's good to have common interests and it's good to like different things. Yeah. I think it just, I mean, you just, man, you just have so much life to figure out. And what do you do? What do you do? Are you in school? Do you, are you working? Yeah, so I just graduated from school. I'm currently looking um, in the broadcasting field. So I graduated cool. with a broadcasting degree. Honestly, in that, I would be single for a while because to be successful in that arena, yeah. you have to be mobile. You have to move. Yep. Uh, I had to move to Des Moines, Iowa for a year, which yeah. is not somewhere I thought I would ever live. But so, yeah. You know, unless, unless, unless love smacks you in the face and knocks you down, I would stay pretty uh, agile and pretty... Uh, uh, independent, honestly, um, yeah. you know, no, don't run from the, someone you meet, but like, yeah, don't feel the need to chase it because, you know, to work your way up in that industry, you have to, you have to off. It's often you have to move around. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely one of the reasons is that I knew that I was going to have to move. And now, you know, I can apply anywhere now. I'm not tied down to a place and, and can kind of have the versatility for my career. I would take advantage of that while, you, you know, mm-hmm. you know. 20, 20, you're only 21, man. Like you could, you could, you could be single for the next seven years and then meet someone that you could have a 50 year marriage with, you know, like it's plenty of time to figure that out. So. Yeah, that's true. Cool, man. Well, thanks for calling. It's always fun to, to hear from the, the men, the men in the audience and the mature mm-hmm. level headed ones 10%. at that. <laughs> so either, I will say the guys who do listen to the show, they all seem to be pretty stand up. Yeah, it's always our, like. I wish emotions. that anyone that I dated yeah. actually listened to a they're dating relationship advice they're, they, show. They, they yeah. all seem like self-aware <laughs> and want to do the right thing. It's Good just, on you, Hunter. You're gonna get uh, all the girls. They're all catches for <laughs> sure. Yeah, they're all like it, you know, you're gonna have a bunch of women reaching out, be like, because of the show, wanting to get your information. Oh, I have a friend who's like the perfect match for him. He's great. <laughs> Uh, but we, we do appreciate you calling in. So best of luck and, yeah, and well, focus on that please, career for, for in the short well, run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love the podcast. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, thanks for listening, buddy. Take care. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, it's like, if, I, he, so if he would have told me he was 30, I would have believed him. <laughs> um, yeah. He's just, you know, figuring it out. He's gonna. He should be single for like five or six years. Yeah, I think, especially in the field he's in, he's gonna have to move around and to have a long distance relationship when you're pursuing a career oh, that so takes hard. so much energy, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week in you know potentially a new town. Um, that would be really tough. Yeah, how's it going? Hi, I'm Sarah, twenty five. Hi, Sarah, twenty five. How can we help? Okay, yeah. So initially, I wrote in because uh, I had graduated from grad school a couple of years ago and uh, I was in a relationship when I first started the program and then that ended and I developed a crush on my professor and he is 35 currently. Um, So I don't know how the math, whatever. Uh, And uh, I always felt uncomfortable kind of, you know, pursuing that because of professionalism and so recently one of my friends kind of helped me reach out to him because he wasn't on social media so I kind of didn't know how to make that transition uh and so a couple weeks ago we met up for coffee but found out that he was in a relationship uh and so my question kind of now is like I've kind of missed that boat because I kind of struggle with reading those vibes or knowing when when something's in your head versus actually real and kind of like how do I go about like pursuing a friendship because that was something that I was still interested in like I don't know like where those 
steps to do. So like when you're like vibing a guy and you're crushing on him, you, there's just some, con- are you saying like you're just more or less the gray area of figuring out like if he's feeling the same way or how you should approach it. And if not, like how to navigate you know, just the friendship. Yeah. Or even cause I'm queer. So I also date women. So I don't like, I'm very, I, my words mean things to me. So okay. even on dates, I've, I'll be like the feedback I've gotten is, Oh, didn't realize you were into me. But I'm like, I've clearly said those words. Oh, I'm into you. Or, Oh, this was a great time. Um, but then it's like, oh, well, you weren't, like, given the body language. Sure. Um, and I recently discovered that I, I'm, I am autistic. And so that is communication is, like, important in relationships. And communication is something that autistic, autistic people struggle with um, even more than general people. Okay. And so how how do I go about yeah, that? that's it. Uh, thanks for sharing. That's, that's very yeah. fascinating. Because, like, even when just talking to you now... Um, you know, like I sometimes get criticized, uh, for being low energy sometimes, right? Like I don't always feel like on, you know, I can have a big personality, but sometimes there's a lot often, especially out in public, I'll be low energy. Right. And then people will take that a certain way. Um, and I feel like I'll have to explain myself and they might say, well, you'd seem like off putting or a dick. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? I wasn't even you know, um, and they'll read my body language. So I, I get what you're saying. And like, even just like talking to you a little bit, like you seem, you know, more quiet and and more demure and like, not necessarily like expressing your excitement in a certain way. And I think people can struggle with that. But I, I can also tell in the, the little that we've talked that you're, um, very specific with your words. Yeah. Like, like you said, they do mean a lot and, um, you're thinking about them a lot before you say them. Yeah. So I think, uh, the best, I mean, just, you said, you know, it's interesting. You say your words are important to you now that you've recently learned this about yourself by being diagnosed as autistic. Um, have you, uh, changed your approach and how you communicate with that? Like, have you, how long ago did you find this out? Was this before some of these other dating scenarios? No, it was after. It was, it's very recent. Okay. And I found that because in women, autism usually shows up different than in men. And so women who are autistic, just like women in general, like learn to, it's called masking. And so like you learn to like, oh, okay, I need to smile. And like, but people can kind of tell that, not that you're autistic, but that something is not like neurotypical people because it's not natural. Like even in artificial intelligence, there's this thing like if a robot looks like a robot, people trust it more versus a robot that tries to yeah. be human. People are like, something's off about this thing. It's similar uh, to so mirroring, I, right? Yeah. And it's exhausting. Like if you, if you are always doing that, uh, and recently I, I used to live alone for the past like five years, I just started having roommates and it's just always having to do that. It gets tiring. And so once I found out that I was autistic, I, don't do that as much because I don't, I'm like, okay, it wasn't just me not being like able to be like everybody else. It's like, this is harmful to me. And so I don't, I don't force yeah. myself. Did you find a sense I've already of, explained, did you find a sense yeah. of comfort when you were diagnosed? Is it, was, did you find it to be like relief, a, a, a relief? It's been a roller coaster. Like first it's like, oh, a relief. But then it's like, oh, people were right. I am weird. Like there's no me changing or it's not just that I'm, because I, I wasn't born in the U.S. And so I was like, oh, it's this cultural difference. Um, but now it's like, no, it's just your brain. And so sometimes it's like, yay, this is like just who I am. And then other times it's like hopeless in a sense. Of, sure. There's always going to be a communication barrier. Mm-hmm. Do you, and, and just, is that more you um, thinking about that or, and, and then kind of, uh, having those inse- like self inflicted insecurities, or has anyone ever said that to you or made you feel a certain way? Said what? Well, I mean, when you say, you know, oh, well, I guess I am weird or whatever. I'm just saying, like, that's just more you internalizing that, right? It's not as if someone's actually said that to you. No, people have said that. People call me weird. Okay. Call me star girl. Said. Oh, you're even five minutes upon meeting. Oh, you're different. It's like I was smiling, laughing yeah. at appropriate times, and it's like I don't understand. That's why I don't 
care as much to accommodate people because people aren't, aren't accommodating me. Yeah, um, no, I get that. I mean, not maybe to your level, but I mean, I, I'm often uh, described as different or, or even sometimes weird. I've, I've learned to embrace that, but sometimes I do, I will get frustrated where it's just like, you know what? I'm not like, I don't, uh, I don't feel the need to like, I, you know, I sometimes joke with my friends who are very on, like have that kind of politician blood where they're just like very much like, I can't do that. Always on and always just like, they're just, everyone's kind of and they naturally drawn to them and I can be charismatic and people can be drawn to me, but there are plenty of times where I said, where I'm just like, I can't help myself say a certain thing and I don't have a filter and then people will make this. And I do, I have, I, f- I think a lot of people, whether they are autistic or not, will get frustrated with having to explain themselves. So to, to a certain degree, I, I can relate. I, if I were you, I would just try to, you know, try to embrace it. I mean, I, I tell you what, like when you say that I'm very fascinated, I would love to learn more about you. Yeah. And if I were, if we were on a date and you, uh, early on, I uh, just said that you were autistic. Um, I would have so many questions. You, you're very articulate. You're, you talk, you, uh, you have I, so many great, I can, have a, I can hold, yeah. you know, we're holding a conversation here. I would want to learn more about you. And that's not to say everyone will, right? There are certain people in this world who are more drawn to unique qualities in people and other people are not. Um, and there are a lot of people who are still ignorant in this world and they'll say, and, and the thing is, you know, it might be helpful to understand is what I've learned is that when people get nervous and they get uncomfortable and they don't know what to say, they almost always say something that's going to be offensive. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, they make some, or they make a statement that makes themselves feel more comfortable yeah. in the situation. They, yeah, they're, and so it's re- literally not you. It's them feeling uncomfortable, not knowing what to say. Uh, sometimes uh, what's nice about um, people who kind of are good talkers, they make it easier on you, right? Because like you don't have to talk. They're talking to you and they make it easier because it's like, well, I don't, I don't know what to say, but you're talking for me. And so they're just kind of projecting their own insecurities onto you. I guess. F- how, do, how do I communicate? Like, I don't know what to do beyond, like, even at, before I knew this, I'm like, oh, my face doesn't like represent how I'm feeling. Like, yeah. so like, don't take that the wrong way, but it still seems to be an issue. Like people, like even just, even with roommates, I'm like, oh, I don't get the concept of just saying hi when I'm walking into a room. Like if you say hi to me, I never not say hi back. Like how do you, when you, you already explained, yeah. how do you, yeah. So when you, when you do your, your roommates know you're autistic. No, they don't. Well, you should tell. I mean, I mean, if you feel comfortable, if you feel comfortable, you know, I would tell them I would think and maybe this is something you're going to have to just do when you're comfortable. I would think getting it out there and letting people know, I would think might be a relief and and, and empowering. Again, I, I wouldn't be turned off by it. I would be drawn to it. I would be really interested. And uh, if I would, even if I had a roommate, because I would listen, you know, as much as I'd say that, like if, if I've met someone and they acted a certain way and, uh, I would be like, Oh, something seems different. I don't know what it is. And then when we don't know the answer to these questions, we just make up assumptions. You know, uh, when we're watching TV, I don't know if you watched the bachelor, but you know, this season, no one could figure out what happened at the end. So people were coming up with this, these crazy scenarios and most of which were nonsense. And so when people don't have the answers, they, they fill in their own storylines and they come up with their own conclusions. Yeah. Um, and if someone is, is reading you differently and, and you do something different that they're not used to and they don't have an answer, they'll just create their own answers. And I think if you are comfortable and explain, hey, listen, just so you know, I'm autistic. This is what this means. There's a, probably a lot of ignorance when it comes to autism. Uh, still, what does it mean to be autistic? How are how are you different than other people? Are there variations of being autistic? You know, um, but if someone's willing to get to know you, um, embrace that. They would embrace yeah. that and ask questions, and then that way, I mean, shit. I got ten siblings. They're all we're all super different and super. And some of them are like, they're just weirder and we're all weird and we all have do certain things to annoy pe- each other. But like, as you get to know them, you're just like, well, that's just how they, how they express their situation. It's kind of no different than learning someone's love language, right? And personality types. I was going to say that as well as you, 
your language is communication verbally. Um, the only experience that I can share is I had a work friend who um, found out uh, a couple years back that he was autistic. But um, even though there is so much ignorance in society, as far as what that means and um, how you communicate, there is a lot more uh, in the media. Uh, the show, I think it's atypical. Um, and there, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm yeah, and it. and so people are now learning more about it, and I think, um, like Nick said, there you have so many incredible attributes. Like you, you seem like you're a very loyal, genuine person who's looking for um, for friends and genuine relationships. You're very well spoken. Um, so going into that and and owning, you know, all of the the positive things that you have to offer. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, and I'm sure in some ways it's easy for us to say, but yeah, I can't emphasize enough that I, I, if I had the, you know, if we, we could, I would have so many questions and want to learn and not everyone's going to be like that, but I think there would be a lot of people who would show uh, an interest. And if you are comfortable sharing that, especially whether it's friendships or romantic relationships, like anything else, when it's, um, uh, it's easier for people to ask questions when you're willing to share a little bit about yourself. Uh, like, you know, I've had this unique experience of being on reality TV, right? And so um, if I'm going to be friends, if my closest friends or people I want to be in a romantic relationship with, to a certain degree, I have to share that with them so they can understand because while it's it's not being autistic, it's a unique experience. A lot of people have a hard time relating to, and I have baggage from it, and I have scars from it, and I have, I get very guarded and in situations that other people might not, and I might be acting a certain way where they're like, "Why are you acting this way?" You know, and I'm like, "Well, because you know, I'm just not comfortable." Um, and if I wasn't willing to tell them, they would again, I, like I said, they would come up with their own scenarios and conclusions. Um, that not might not be fair to me, but I if I'm not willing to share with them, it might be hard for them to understand. Um, so yeah, I think uh, if this is a new thing for you, you you're getting used to like learning this thing about yourself. Um, so don't be in a rush. But I would I would encourage you to share it with people. I don't I don't see it as a I don't see I I don't see it as a negative thing at all. Um, I share it with it's just having my roommates because. I don't think they deserve it because I've explained with like, I don't feel like they need that to understand. I've explained the things that maybe cause issues. Yeah. And so for me, it's kind of like, if you don't care when me already explaining to you how it actually is, this label is not, is not, doesn't matter. Yeah. Then you're not doing it because you care about me as a person. I get that. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, we live in a world where we, we we're all kind of selfish with people expect uh, even like relationships. You talk about love languages and personality tests. Like most of the time people are concerned about their love language as it relates to their needs. It's like, I, my love language is words of affirmation. So I need, I need you to affirm me. You know, I need, I need you to give me gifts cause I like gifts or, you know, I need you to do nice things cause I like act of service. Like, most people, when they learn about love language, are thinking in that context, not necessarily learning about their partner's love language so they can meet their needs. And that's just something I think as a society we need to do better at. But it, it's, it works with friendships as well, too. You know. Have you felt comfortable sharing it with other people in your life? Yeah, even before, I, like when I started expecting that, I would always tell people, like, that's the issue. I, I've, I share too much information because I don't, care to hide something that is true about myself mm -hmm. um so i've told my friends and my family and stuff like that but not just it's just i haven't told my roommates because this is okay. within a yeah. few months i think ago that, that i found this out that's good too is is leaning into those people that are supportive and and want to listen and care about you how how would you feel comfortable like on a like a um like a, even a first date of of mentioning that to someone if it came up like i don't know 
I probably would put it like on my dating profile if even just been in there. But I mean, I, do whatever. I, I, I would say it's interesting because and again, I'm, I'm no expert at this. I have, I'm, I don't have a lot of experience, but I think because a lot of people are ignorant about autism, I m- I would be reluctant if I were you to put it on your dating profile because it gives people a lot of reasons to make assumptions they have no clue. But like mm-hmm. just talking to you, like I like if you talked if we were talking right now and you didn't tell me this, I wouldn't I wouldn't be like oh, I wonder if she's autistic. You know what I'm saying? I would never guess that. So as soon as some as soon as you're sitting down face to face with someone. And then kind of bring it up even pretty quickly there. A, it's a quick. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. In terms of like first date jitters and not knowing what to talk about, bam, you immediately have a lot to talk about, and like, and that might get exhausting for I'm you to always have your first date. You you're also yourself. going out with intelligent people if you have your master's yeah. degree. <laughs> so, yeah. so they're going to be people that, um, you know, that you're either to, yeah. have that information or are willing to learn more about it and you. But on a first date, saying it on the first date early on, I think if you're comfortable with it, it would be a good thing. Um, yeah, isn't Amy Schumer married to someone who's? Uh, I don't. I think he has Asper, Asperger's or dirt. It is that in the, the autism family? That's, yeah, that's no longer a diagnosis. Okay. That the previous Different. label is okay. called autism spectrum disorder. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but you know he is. As she talks about in her stand up. That he is different, yeah. and he, uh, people. He, you know, she was very open about it, and the way she describes, like that's what she loves about him and his honesty, and et cetera, et cetera. So, again, there's going to be plenty of uh, people out there, uh, I think, who uh, will will embrace your personality and who you are, and whether that's weird or different or whatever one of people say, like. You know, I think those are the people, the people who are, who have unique qualities about them and are able to embrace that. Those are the people who are, I think, are able to find like really unique and strong connections because they are who they are and they're not afraid to hide it and they don't pretend to be something they're not. And, you know, um, you know, and so, yeah, I think this is so new for you too. You've only known this for two months. So there's probably just a, a, it's a process for you, but, um, I, Maybe easier said than done for me, but I wouldn't run from it. I think this is a unique quality that I think it is going to, uh, you know, draw uh, the right people. That it kind of is kind of to Kathy's point. That, like, yeah. um, we don't have time for people that, you know, aren't willing to give us the time to get to know us. And this is an opportunity for you to draw the right people in your life and make those types of connections worth having. How do you discern? Because I have a pattern of, and people are like, oh, I have a bad picker. Like, how do you <laughs> not continue to do that? Like, I feel like I'm always going for the 30-year-old, like, since I was 19. And then it, like, speeds up the timeline or situations that are more difficult. Like, I was in a long-distance relationship or, like, my professor. It's, like, something there's always Girl, I, a I'm a bad picker, too. I completely yeah. relate to that. So I don't think that that's, you know, something that's exclusive to anyone. I think that it's all about learning and um, filtering out the right people in your life. Like Nick said, you know, there are going to be a lot of people um, and only a few that you really gravitate to. So it's, you know, learning from either, you know, past mistakes or heartbreaks or just, you know, really leaning into the people that you feel most comfortable with. Yeah. And it's not that they're bad people. It's just the the situation usually is not conducive like even now like there's someone who like I met in Australia who now lives in the UK and it's like you should just come and visit me but we've never met and I'm like oh that's what I'm going to tend to go towards versus someone who lives in the city that I live in who I I love a good long distance love affair I mean I've, I've had that before I get it um I, yeah, everyone has a bad picker. I I also found myself gravitating towards relationships that were long distance in my past just because it was more comfortable to me because that meant that I didn't have to face a lot of more serious issues that I was dealing with because um, it kind of kept them at a distance. So maybe that's something to to really look at, um, you know, your past dating history and and um, figure out because I, I think we do also attract in some way um what we're ready for. Yeah. And I was going to say too, I mean, it could make sense why you've been drawn to maybe older guys, men generally mature uh, slower than women. And if you are, if you always felt like you had a unique uh, personality 
and you felt like some people uh, were quick to judge your personality, it would make sense that why an older guy uh, uh, might make you feel more safe and more comfortable because a 19, 20 year old guy might, you know, say rude things and not be as understanding or at least made you feel that way. So it, my guess is maybe you just felt safer in that situation. Yeah. And I don't think that's necessarily bad for you to be dating an older guy. Um, but even older guys, they have different personalities and, you know, like everyone else dating is hard. So we all have bad pickers. Uh, you just kind of learn from your past mistakes, but um, let people get to know who you are and give them a chance to accept you for who you are or not. And then you move on and, and invest in people who make you feel like you can be yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you. This has been a really interesting call and really, you know, learning for, for me. And it's always, it's interesting learning different people's stories. Your so, person's out there. Yeah. You know it. Um, I, yeah, I would love, I would love to learn more. This has been really fascinating. So thanks so much for, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. That was a great call. Yeah. I, I just want to give her a hug. I want to learn more about I her. I want to go like on a date said. with her and just ask yeah. her questions. And, <laughs> you know, she seems so interesting yeah. and I get it though too. Like I can't, it's, uh, um, it's see people, people expect people to be a certain way. And then when we get uncomfortable and get nervous, we say things and yeah. sometimes those are, can be offensive and rude. And, um, I, I, when she said like people will, like we'll call her weird or different and she's tired of explaining herself to, for different reasons. I can relate. I can relate. That, yeah. And it's just like, it gets exhausting. And it's like, you know what? I'm not like that. And I'm not like everyone else. And honestly, I don't want to try to be And like, that's great that you are, but like, you know, whatever. What's been so interesting to me about being on the show is how relatable every single situation is. Yeah of we've all been in these same scenarios um, and how that's literally spread across the country. It's not just, just one person. Yeah. Well, that's why this, this podcast has been successful. Even like I, people always, why is the bachelor always like still on? Because like love is the <laughs> most relatable thing. Yeah. And whether it's like, and there's so many it's different never levels, gonna go right? Away. Like whoever you are, whatever your sexual orientation is, whatever your age is, uh, there's always issues. There's always struggles. We are dealing with our own problems and it's, it's also just really hard to navigate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, that was, that was a fun call. I really appreciate it. Uh, Kathy, thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a ton of fun. You'll have to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening guys. Another great episode. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, do we know who we have coming on Wednesday? We don't. We don't know who we have coming on Wednesday yet. We've, well, we will at this point, but we don't know yet. So anyways, make sure you tune in on Wednesday. Uh, we'll sure to bring you a uh, wonderful episode. And don't forget to send us in your questions at asknickacastmedia.com, cast with a K, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye, guys. <laughs>